Ive, I-E-L-T-S, class. My name is Adrian, and I am streaming to you from beautiful Budapest here, situated in the Carpathian Basin. And I hope everybody has had a good week and is looking forward to a safe, healthy, and relaxing weekend. Hi, Awaz. I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. I hope you're doing well also. Hi, Tito. Uh, students, this is a members chat class. To be a member, you need to click the join button uh, on uh, the uh, channel. If you don't see that, just send me an email. I can help you out, give you some further instructions. Of course, everybody is welcome to watch. It's a good idea, especially if you're studying for the academic IELTS exam. Uh, today, we are looking at a task one pie chart uh, band nine example that we will do together. Hi, Pavan. Hi, Connie. Hi, Alexander. Uh, coming up in 90 minutes, we will have an all chat class uh, that will focus on task two writing where everybody will be able to join in on the chat. While we wait for a few more of your peers members, uh, this class is brought to you by aehelp.com. For academic IELTS, uh, check us out there. And for the general version of the exam, check us out at G-I-E-L-T-S-Help.com. That's generalisleshelp.com. So if you're looking for examples about letter writing and email writing, which is the task one for the general version of the exam, you can find some HD video lessons and uh, interactive uh, courses at uh, gilshelp.com for those topics. Hi, Maksud. Good on you to be in class and on time. One of our newer members. Hi, Preeti for Dobbs. Good to see you. Uh, again, students, the websites, they look like this. This is the academic one here uh, with the uh, blue background. You can click that big red button to join. Uh, spend a couple dollars, invest in your learning and your future. It's a good idea. And for the general version of the exam, uh, this is the website here with the green background. Uh, click that big red button and you'll find reading sections and writing sections in this uh, web portal that will focus on the general aisles. Hi, Dr. Krishna. Welcome to the class. All right, students. Uh, so uh, without further ado, let's start to get into uh, today's lesson. Um, again, it is a task one. Uh, just quickly, if anybody has questions, of course, uh, send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. New members, make sure to send me an email so I can hook you up with your perks. And uh, again, task one right now, followed by task two in the next class, tomorrow questions and answers and then speaking part three. So here we go with writing task one. This is again for the academic version of the exam. Uh, always start with task one, okay? Sometimes I get this question like, is it a good strategy to start with task two? No, it's not a good strategy, okay? Uh, task one is an expository essay, which means that you uh, have to explain the information. You do not give your own opinion. Be careful about that, students. I've seen a lot of students do that where um, they give their own opinion for task one, which is not a good idea, okay? So there are four basic types of essays in literature. Uh, they are persuasive. Oh, I'll well, write them up here. Persuasive, uh, that's task two, okay, by the way. Um, then there's expository, which is task one academic. Uh, then there is narrative, which is task one general IELTS. And then there's descriptive, which is kind of like the king of all types of writing. You find elements of descriptive writing in all essays. Descriptive. Yeah, sometimes challenging to talk and type different ideas at the same time. Um, so uh, IELTS task one writing is expository. That means you have to uh, express and explain the information that you see. Okay, This is what's called expository 
writing or expository essay. Okay, uh, if you haven't heard about that, so members, is, is this new for anyone, this word, when I say expository writing? Is that new for anybody? Elena, Preeti, Alexander, Connie, are you familiar with this concept, expository writing? Okay, if somebody's not familiar with this, especially if you're taking the academic IELTS, uh, please make sure to research it, okay, Google that, all right? Um, they should teach you that in high school, grade 12. Sometimes they leave it until college, okay? So uh, expository writing, that's your task one, okay? And uh, in university, you have to have good skills uh, for each of these kinds of writing. The most common types, no surprise, in university and college are persuasive and expository. That's why the academic IELTS tests your ability to write persuasive and expository essays because those are the most common kinds of essays in college and university, okay? Uh, Roshni, it's not quite described. Describe as descriptive essays. It's a little bit more than that. It's explaining, okay? So uh, expository essays seek to express and explain information that you see. Another way to think about it is interpret information, okay? You should not give your opinion in expository writing, okay? Um, so, and also it's more than just describing it. So when students write task one, if they're just writing a very basic descriptive, like, we can see that in March, this number increased by 10%. In July, it decreased by 20%. In August, it was the most, and in November, it was the least. This is weak expository writing because it's closer to just descriptive, descriptive writing, okay? So expository is more than just describing. All right, so having said that, let's look at this question. Uh, here we go, so careful, read the question with me. You should spend about 20 minutes on this task, okay? Don't spend more time. Start with task one, as I said at the beginning of the class, because expository writing is easier than persuasive writing. Uh, why? why? Why do you think that is? Let me just ask you instead of giving you the information. So Ferdovs, Pavan, what do you think? Why is expository writing easier than persuasive writing? Okay, while well, somebody gives me the answer, let's read this. So the following chart shows employment patterns for 2005 in Australia, describe the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Okay, let's read it one more time. The following chart show the following charts, uh, I should say. There's two of them, you'll see. And the following charts show employment patterns uh, for 2005 in Australia. Describe the main features and make comparisons. Where relevant, you should write at least 150 words. So it's okay if you write 200 words because it's minimum 150 words. Yeah, very good, Elena. Thank you for the answer. Yeah, Dr. Krishna, good. All of the information is there. You just have to interpret it exactly. That's why expository uh, writing is easier because you're explaining what you already see or what's given, okay? Um, and persuasive writing, it's more challenging because you have to come up with your own ideas, okay? That's why you get more time for task two. So task one, 150 words, task two, 250 words, but task two is double the time, right? So 20 minutes for 150 words is less time relatively than 40 minutes for 250 words, okay? That's the logic. So start with task one because it's easier and it gets your brain and your hand moving. Yeah, Preeti, very good, Preeti Yogi, all the information is there. Okay, so um, good, clever students, very good. I'm very happy you're all 
thinking quickly and in a smart, smart way. All right, uh, so one more time, the following charts show employment patterns for 2005 in Australia, okay? Describe the main features. So let's take a look at this uh, pie chart. All right, here we go. Uh, bada bing, bada boom. There we are. Uh, pie chart one, female. Pie chart two, male. Okay, now careful, there's no one and two here. It's just two pie charts. So the first is female, the second is male. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six. You can see that yellow one a little bit better here. So we have six slices for each of these pies. And then we have this little piece here. Uh, quickly, students, what do you call this box that describes the different kinds of work, manual work and non-manual work, craft or similar, general labor, other manual, managerial, professional. Yeah, very good, Preeti. It's called the legend, not plural, Preeti, singular. Okay, legend, no S, Preeti, no S. Okay, so this is your legend, okay? So the legend shows us that the different kinds of work that are measured in these pie charts are manual work. Uh, everybody understands manual work. It means you're working with your hands, doing something, hammering, screwdriver, uh, cleaning, okay? So doing some kind of work with your hands. And then um, non-manual. So non-manual um, basically means you're working with your mind, okay, your brain. So uh, now the pie charts are quite big, so please keep in mind that the uh, light blue, gray, and dark blue, so in the cold colors here, the blues and grays, uh, that's the non-manual, okay, or mental work. All right, um, and, uh, and then here, the green, yellow, and uh, reddish orange, uh, that's the manual labor, okay? So when we look at the pie charts, uh, we can see that the manual uh, labor is kind of on the left side of each of these uh, charts, so you have... Uh, the manual labor here, and then you have the non-manual labor here. Uh, now, on this chart, you have the uh, non-manual here, again, a little bit more on the right, and then on the left. Uh, keep this in mind, that will just help me so I don't have to keep moving this information up and down, okay? All right, so manual, non-manual. Manual, non-manual. Okay, we'll take a look at the legend a couple times, but that's basically it. All right. Okay, so uh, first steps first. Paraphrase the question and give some more details. Okay, so here you have the question. The following charts show employment patterns for 2005 in Australia. Describe the main features and make comparisons where relevant. We're going to start with the overview. Please, students, don't really separate the introduction from the overview. It looks really weird. Um, I'll show you that in a minute once we finish this. I see some websites showing it to do it this way and even some IELTS books. It's not a good approach. It looks really segmented, really separated, the information. You don't need to do that, okay? The overview is the introduction. It's weird to say introduction and overview. They're synonyms, okay? If I'm giving you an overview of an idea or something, I'm basically introducing it. So this is the in, in introduction. You do not need to separate uh, these into different paragraphs, okay? Uh, it's quite rare in writing to have a one-sentence paragraph or a two-sentence paragraph, okay? Uh, so careful with that. 
All right, Ferdov says the two bar charts. Who careful, bar, uh, Ferdov? It's not a bar chart. It's a it's a pie chart. Okay, not a bar chart. So be very careful, Ferdov. You don't want to start with that kind of a mistake because that will cost you a band score for sure. Okay, so Ferdov, the two pie charts compare females and males job templates uh, divided into uh, two categories, manual and non-manual in 2005 in Australia. So for Dobbs, a little bit of uh, uh, attention there to detail, okay? Uh, Charlie Sen says, the above two pie charts represent the pattern of different types of jobs in Australia in the year 2005 for females and males separately. Okay, uh, Charlie, don't refer to the location of um, the charts on the paper. It's just kind of weird, okay? So just say the given pie charts or the two pie charts, but don't say the pie charts below or above because if I'm not looking at the paper, it's just weird. Like, where am I looking? The two pie charts above? All I see is my ceiling of my studio. Um, so that's weird, okay? Uh, a while... <laughs> Maybe there's a pie chart up there. Who knows? Um, Awaz Akhmadov says, the given two pie charts provide information about employment figures for manual and non-manual work uh, in 2005 in Australia for males and females. Very nice, Awaz. Okay, that's the better one so far. Good job, Awaz. Uh, Pavan says the two pie charts depict the employment patterns of genders, male and female in Australia in the year 2005. The legend illustrates manual and non-manual labor, uh, further divided into six subcategories. Pavan, you're on such a nice roll there that I'm going to take your writing and I'm going to just even finish that off with a bit more. Now, Pavan, when you say uh, patterns of uh, male, female genders, you might not even need to say male and female because, well, we mostly still just divide humans into the two gender groups. So, um, yeah, here we go. So the two presented pie charts uh, depict the involvement of men and women in either manual or non-manual labor which are further divided into six subcategories described in the legend okay and then of course if you're looking at the legend you might list those as well but that's nice pavan okay so you gave me a couple of good ideas there pavan nicely done you get my first ultra thumbs up of the day fantastic okay so uh let's see a couple more Dr. Krishna says the given pie charts depict occupational configuration of males and females, plural there, Dr. Krishna, in Australia in the year 2005. Yeah, I forgot the year. Thanks for reminding me. Uh, so the two presented pie charts depict the involvement of men and women in either manual or non-manual labor in the year 2005 in Australia. And the, this, or the employment fields are further divided into six, six subcategories described in the legend. Thank you, Dr. Krishna, for reminding me of that important Australia in 2005. Yeah, get as much detail in there as possible. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Roshni says the given two pie charts illustrate data about manual and non-manual job trends in 2005 in Australia for men and women. Roshni, that's really nice. Okay. That's a band nine start. It's very concise. 
Well done. Elena says the following pie charts depict the percentage of male and female employment in 2005 in Australia with six different sectors. Yeah, that works as well. Elena, very good. Okay, nicely done. All right. So far, so good, students. All right. Uh, now, uh, of course, we want to describe the main feature. So, um, what is the main feature? What's the most uh, notable main feature? What do we notice right away? So, look at the big picture here, please. Um, what is the main feature that we can include into our overview, right? We need one more sentence in the overview, and it has to be the main feature. So, overall or clearly or immediately it is recognizable um, what do we recognize before we start to uh, pinpoint our details here okay so what's the most recognizable here what what should you what should you notice right away so Roshni says non-manual work is 41 percent let's not get into percents yet um, I think you're talking who are you talking about um, you're talking about oh I don't know if I see a 41% there Roshni careful with your so remember this is the non-manual and this is the manual the green yellow red that's the manual the blue light blue gray and dark blue that's the non-manual okay Mm hmm. So uh, Dr. Krishna says uh, proportionally men are involved in manual work more than women. Um, Elena says blue portion is same for male and female. <laughs> Pavan says women are more creative and use their minds. So Pavan, be really careful. This is what I mean. You can't do that. Okay. So Pavan, I'm going to uh, make an example here of this. So Pavan says uh, women are more creative and use their mind more for work uh, while men have a uh, stronger physique and uh, or a stronger physical build let's say and uh, work with their hands. Um, okay, this is bad, okay? Why is this bad? So why is it bad to write something like that? You will actually lose marks. Even if you're writing in perfect English, if you sit the academic aisles and you write a sentence like this, even if it's for the summary, you will lose marks. Why? Okay? Why, why will you lose marks? Tell me that. It's a very important question. Okay. I'm going to put this up at the top for us. But you'll definitely drop a half a band if you're writing sentences or even one sentence like that. Okay. And I'm going to put this up here. Because this is exactly... Yeah, so Roshni says there's no information like that. You can't see that in the pie chart, okay? Uh, for people who are into science and uh, academia, it's very important that we stick to the facts, okay? It's not an informal language. It's personal thought. That's right, Connie. So this is bad because it is persuasive rhetoric, meaning subjective opinion okay so it can be argued there's no information that uh, gives us that in the actual pie chart it doesn't say that men are stronger in fact uh, women often will have better endurance uh, so in a job like uh, waitering or waitressing women will often outperform men because they have greater stamina or endurance which means they can go for longer than men Okay, so, um, so you have to be careful. Yeah, exactly, Elena. That's for task two, not for task 
one, okay? You cannot include personal thoughts like that, okay? So, Pavan, I really appreciate you sharing that thought because it emphasizes exactly what I said at the beginning of the class. Okay, so students, what you should realize here, okay, remember we're focusing on non-manual and manual labor. So, for the overview, you should see that for, uh, let me go down a little bit more here. So, for females, the non manual labor makes up well over a half of all of the people who have been surveyed, okay? Uh, for men, it actually makes up a little bit less than half, okay? Manual labor, working with their hands, makes up a bit more than half, okay? For women, it makes up uh, just over one uh, quarter, okay? So that's what's most observable. That's your main feature. That's what you need to report to get that band nine, okay? And it's proportional. We don't know how many men are represented. We don't know how many uh, women, okay? So the number of women, we don't know. The number of men, we don't know. Maybe this is equal to a thousand men surveyed, and this is equal to 200 women surveyed. We don't know that. We only know the percentages, uh, and the proportions, okay? In academic IELTS, you're being tested on more than just English, so be really careful, okay? All right, so that's what you have to report. Uh, so please report that sentence. I see some of you already did that. I'm going to write it down as well to show you what a band nine uh, overview would look like in this case, and then we'll keep going, okay? So, overall, it is evident that well over half of the women in this data work or worked because it's 2005 so uh, you can refer to it in the past tense, but when you're referring to the data, you should refer in the present tense, okay? So it is evident that well over half the women in this data work in non-manual jobs, while a little less than half of men work in non-manual jobs, okay? Or you could do it vice versa. You could say while a little over half of men work in manual jobs, all right? Let's keep it clear. So this is the overview, all right? Now, what I see sometimes um, students doing is they separate the overview and the introduction like this, and then they have another paragraph for the analysis and then they have another paragraph for the summary. You don't need four paragraphs for a 200 word essay, okay? It just looks odd. So please don't do that. Uh, instead, combine this uh, main feature with the description of what you're looking at, okay? It reads better. So this is what your overview slash introduction should read. Uh, the two presented pie charts depict the involvement of men and women in either manual or non-manual labor in the year 2005 in Australia, and the employment fields are further divided into six subcategories described in the legend. Overall, it is evident that well over half of the women in this data work in non-manual jobs, while a little less than half of men work in non-manual labor. Okay, let's change jobs so we're not repeating words. And that is your band nine overview, okay? All right, uh, makes sense so far, hopefully. I'm gonna read a couple of your responses there, students. That's looking good, all right? Uh, Charlie says the percentage of manual and non-manual work for men are almost the same, whereas for women, non-manual work is much higher than manual work. Yeah, okay, it's good. 
Um, so this is expository writing. We're explaining, we're interpreting the data. Very good. Uh, for Dov says, overall, it is obvious that men did about half of the manual work in the given year. However, women engaged with manual jobs two-third of the total in that year. Mm, that's a little bit confusing for Dobbs because it sounds like you're talking about men and women doing the same jobs, but we don't know that. So you have to be really careful. Do you see what I mean for Dobbs, how that can be misunderstood, what you're writing? It sounds like you're talking about men and women working in the same pool of jobs, but we don't know that information. That's not what the uh, pie charts are giving us, okay? All right, Elena says, overall, it is shown that half of the women work for non-manual jobs, uh, whereas men are less involved than women in non-manual jobs. Um, Elena, it's more than half of women, much more. It's almost three quarters. Uh, non-manual. So careful, information mistakes will cost you. Okay. Uh, I know that the graph is not always there, so it's easier to make these mistakes in these live classes, Elena, but still you have to be really careful. Okay. All right. Awaz Preeti, yours are looking good. I just checked them. Let's keep going. So now we write the body paragraph, which is of course the analyses. Okay. Now, for the analyses, your first point should always be uh, the overview described in a little bit more detail. So don't be shy. Do a little math. Okay. So for males, uh, the manual work. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to note that as an M. Uh, 24 plus 2, 26 plus 26, 52%. Okay, which leaves, of course, non-manual as 48%, right? Because you're always counting from 100. So quick, clear math is a good skill to have for task one. Okay, uh, the same concept for uh, women, manual labor. 3 plus 1 is 4, plus 27 is uh, 31, plus 9 is 40. So it's 40, 60. Okay, non-manual is 60%. So that's going to be your point number one, okay? Obviously, it makes sense uh, to describe that. Um, Elena, sure, I'll help you out here, okay? So Elena says, you can't see the percents all that well. Uh, I think if I darken it up, you'll see it better. Let's, let me check, okay? Hopefully, you can see it a little bit more. Okay, I think, it, yeah, it's a little bit bright against it. Can you see that a little bit better now, Elena? Yeah, so I just darkened it up, Abhishek. That's exactly what I did. Yeah, it's tough to get the uh, lighting just right for these live classes on these charts. Okay. All right. Should be better. Hopefully. You can, can kind of see it. Um, you know what? I'll uh, for just, okay, here, how about this? 29, 3, 1, 27, 931. There you go. Right? Always look for solutions. It's one of the greatest tricks to a happy, successful life. And there you are. Okay? Those are uh, the percents. Right? I'm pretty sure that's one of the things Master Yoda said in Star Wars. Think about what you can do, not what you can't do. Okay? All right. Um, so there we have the percents. You can see them now. And, uh, okay, so we have our first point, which is kind of the main feature. Uh, what would be your second point here? So what would you describe secondly? Okay. So what would be a good second comparison here, members? Okay, so we've compared manual, non-manual. We start with that. That's our point one. Now we go into more detail. What should we compare? What do you think would be a good idea to compare? What would be your number two? Okay, give me that information. The big slices says Ferdovs. Okay, 
Uh, which are the biggest overall slices? What are the biggest overall slices? It's the 36 and the 29, right? So my second point of comparison would be this. I'm going to use a different number style, okay? So number two would be that one at 29 and 36 for that. Now let's see what that is. So that's the... Uh, light blue, so that's the managerial and professional, okay? So the managerial and professional. So look at this, even though men do overall less uh, non-manual work than women, the slice for managerial work is bigger for men than women by 7%. Uh, what would be your third one? So since we're on this topic, um, what would be your, your next one? Okay. Now, I wouldn't jump around to this red or orange slice, which are roughly equal. I would stick with the uh, non-manual, okay? And I would probably describe this huge difference in the gray slice. That's right, Roshni. That would be my number three. So this 6%, here, and this 31% here, okay? So that would definitely be my third point, okay? Now, here I have 6% and 9% for the dark blue. I might describe that if I'm going for a band 9 and I know that I can write quickly, but if not, I would just leave that and then uh, move to this big orange slice. So this would be my number four. Okay. This would be my number five. Uh, and then uh, this 1% and 2% for the little tiny slices, that would be my number six. Again, you're going up to 200, 220 words easily at this point. And this I would leave as my three plus. Okay. Here. So again, this is why you have to practice at home. If you're fast and you know that you can uh, include information about these smaller slices where there aren't really uh, big differences or they're not as important for the overall percentage, right? One or 2%. Sure, this 2% is double this 1%, but in the grand scheme of the 100%, it, these are very, very little amounts, right? So if you don't have time to describe those, please don't uh, write uh, bad sentences for these big slices because you're rushing to try to include information for these little slices. Does that make sense? That was really important what I just said there. So make sure that you have good sentences for these big comparisons before investing time into these. And, and make sure that you're not going over 20 minutes to write about these little lines here, these little pies, and taking time away from task two. That's a very, very bad idea, okay? If you're like, oh, I have to still write about these uh, little yellow slices here uh, because I forgot to include that, and I know I'm over 20 minutes, but it's okay, I'm going to write about them and then go to task two, no. Okay, don't do that. You're going to lose band scores. You're going to hurt your task two. Okay, task two is more valuable. All right, students. So 40, 60, 52, 48 uh, for the manual, non-manual, uh, female, uh, male jobs. Let's start with that and then we'll do the rest. So uh, go ahead, students. I'm going to erase these right now. We'll come back to them as we go sentence by sentence. So I'm gonna write, you're gonna write, we're gonna go fast, we're gonna work on fluency. Uh, this is our first point here, going into more detail. Let's get cracking, let's get into the analysis. Here we go, all right. So type away. Um, so looking 
at the, I'm going to be a little bit quiet so I don't distract you. All right, so there it is for me for that first point. Looking at the pies in more detail, 40% of women engaged in manual labor uh, and 60% in non-manual work, while the same division was 52% and 48% respectively for men. There's your clear, concise description for uh, the um, first main uh, feature described in more detail, okay? So, All right, so Abhishek says, going into more detail, 40% uh, of women uh, were in manual jobs and 60% in non-manual work, whereas men were 52% and 48% respectively in the same division. Good, Abhishek, no comma after work, okay? Uh, remember, Abhishek, if your independent clause is first, you don't need a comma, so no comma after work careful with your punctuation uh, charlie says it is clear from the charts that the percentage of non-manual jobs for men is 48 percent whereas for women it is 60 percent similarly the percentage of manual work for men and women are 52 and 40 percent respectively um, it's not similarly charlie similarly i don't think is the right connective word there uh, I would use the word conversely. Conversely, the percentage of manual work for, when and, for men and women are 52 and 40% respectively. So watch your connective words, okay? Awaz says, looking at the data, careful Awaz, at the data in more detail, 40% of women engaged in manual labor and 60% in non-manual work. Not plural, Awaz, just work while 52% of men worked in manual and 48% of this gender worked in non-manual jobs. Good, nice finish, Awaz. Uh, Preeti says, to begin, around 60% of females did non-manual work, whereas only 48% of men in this figure compared to that of women. Preeti, that's a little bit awkward in the end. Rethink, rephrase that, okay? 
On the contrary, 52% of males engaged in manual jobs, while 40% of women did this type of job in 2000 or did these types of jobs in 2005. Okay, good. All right, Roshni, Elena, good. Uh, let's keep going. So this is what I have so far. Uh, looking at the pies in more detail, 40% of women engaged in manual labor and 60% in non-manual work, while the same division was 52 and 48% respectively for men. Going into the subcategories, a, a noteworthy difference. Let's put a comma there. That's a leading expression. A noteworthy difference between men and women is observable in professional and managerial work. Although proportionally less men did white collar work, more men were employed in managerial positions than women by 9% to be exact, 29 and 36% respectively. Another way that we call manual work um, is blue collar. It's traditional in uh, days past. Uh, people who did work with their hands often wore blue clothing and uh, people who worked more with their minds wear more white clothing, okay? Uh, it's just because, of course, dirt doesn't show up as easily on white clothes. So blue collar, white collar. It's uh, sometimes people don't think it's that PC, politically correct to use that these days, but I don't think there's anything really wrong with it. I don't know. I think it's a little bit being oversensitive. But anyway, uh, here we go. So uh, now let's go to the next point, which is the gray slice, okay? 31% for women and 6% for men for the gray slice, okay? And that is clerical work, clerical work. So administrative clerical work, okay? Uh, how would I report that? Right away, I think, okay, 31 and six, that's a difference of five fold, so five times, okay? All right, um, Elena, that's a good tip, okay? I'll keep that in mind. So Elena says, uh, can you share the picture of the chart before the class? Uh, so it'll be easier to follow. Yeah, Elena, I'll make a mental note of that. And in the future, I'll uh, post it into the community uh, chat beforehand. Okay, so I'll, um, I'll do that. Hopefully people will look at it before the class, Elena. Yeah, maybe. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, very good, Connie. It's just a little over five fold. Okay, so that's very good, Connie. And that's expository writing. Okay, so um, conversely, converse, oh, geez, mental block sometimes. So conversely, conversely means on the other hand, um, conversely, Uh, women proportionally did clerical work five times that of men at 31% versus just 6%. Okay. So that would be this big uh, gray slice here, okay? All right, um, and then if I'm going for that band nine, uh, then I would maybe report on this 6% and 9% for other types of non-manual labor, and I would just do that really simply, okay? Um, Abhishek, that's good as well. There we go. Okay. All right. So um, if I'm going for a band nine, the six and nine percent, just a really uh, quick sentence about that. So here we go. Uh, 
other non-manual labor made up a small portion of the total for both genders, 9% for women, and 6% for men. Okay. All right. So we're doing a good job and I don't want to rush you members. So what I'm going to do, check this and Elena, it's because you gave me an idea. I'm going to post this um, pie chart into our community board um, after the next class. Okay. So in about two hours, you can take a look at this chart. And what I want you to do for homework members is finish, finish the analysis or analyses for manual work. Okay. I wrote it as a big M because it's the title in this case. Okay. So for manual work and the summary. Okay. So both of those. So what your goal will be, will be to describe, compare and contrast these colorful slices and give the summary. Okay. So we don't have to rush through it in this class. And then of course, as I usually do, I'll complete the essay as well in the next couple of days and then post it so you can compare your writing to my writing and see the similarities and differences. Does that sound good? Thumbs up members. Is that sounding like a good idea? Okay. There'll be some nice practice for you, I think. And it should work out well. Maksud says, okay. All right, Maksud. Thank you for seconding that recommendation. All right, students. So uh, again, so far, this is what I have. I'll read it. The two presented pie charts depict the involvement of men and women in either manual or non-manual labor in the year 2005, in the year 2005 in Australia. And the employment fields are further divided into subcategories described in the legend. Overall, it is evident that well over half of the women in this data work in non-manual jobs, while a little less than uh, half of men work in non-manual labor. Looking at the pies in more detail, 40% of women engaged in manual labor and 60% of non-manual work, while the same division was 52 and 48% respectively for men. Going into the subcategories, a noteworthy difference between men and women is observable in professional and managerial work. Although proportionally less men did white collar work, more men were employed in managerial positions than women by 9% to be exact, 29 and 36% respectively. Conversely, women proportionally did clerical work five times that of men at 31 percent versus just six percent. Other non-manual labor made up a small portion of the total for both genders, nine percent for women and six percent for men. Okay, Connie, thanks for seconding that. Abhishek, awesome. I'll make sure to post that. I'll make myself a little note just after I wrap up. Elena, you're welcome. Preeti, you're welcome. And I look forward to your completed uh, essays. In 30 minutes, let's keep the ball rolling and our minds and hands moving with task to writing. I think I've come up with kind of an exciting, interesting topic for us there. Awaz, perfect. I'll see you in half an hour. Uh, hopefully all of our other viewers as well. Students, once more, if you like these lessons and you want to have good structured materials anywhere, anytime, on your phone, tablet, PC, uh, please uh, do visit and join our premium packages at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general. I think most people that take my word and try out those websites and the premium packages are satisfied and improved by at least a band score. So give it a shot. Thank you so much for watching. And again, hopefully I'll see you in half an hour for task two. Much love from Budapest. Bye for now.